going through the refining fire of your process and coming out, how has everything been different? How has it been, cha- how has it been changed since when you first got here? How different is your life? Well, <clears throat> I had an aha moment not that long ago. And of course we have charts for this. And <laughs> I'm going to teach on this more in depth on one of the podcasts, but uh, I think for me, I had a real revelation. So it started with, uh, we talked about me putting on my full armor, realizing that we fight against uh, prince and principalities, not against flesh, not against other people or ourselves. Uh, undoing all the lies that were planted there from the enemy and then uh, get, gaining my identity. But the last process for me was really understanding the revelation of the cross and that the cross actually opens the door to the kingdom realm and that the cross is actually just the beginning of our journey. And what I, I had a powerful aha, like, I started to understand something for the first time. Jabbar would say, now Jabbar didn't grow up in church. He was radically saved basically from the street life. And I grew up in church. I grew up in church. Right. And so we had a very different uh, view. We were kind of stuck in religion. And um, one of the things I realized was that um, the enemy uses condemnation to make us constantly feel shame from our sin. And when we allow the enemy to do that, we are basically taking away the power of the cross to leave us unashamed, naked and unashamed before God and uncondemnable. In John, it says that Jesus says out loud, he says, the enemy of the dark world, this is in John 15, are coming to this world. But I stand unaccused by Satan. This is why I walk in power, basically what Jesus was saying. I walk in power because Satan cannot use anything against me. And the great thing about the cross is it makes it so we also stand uncondemned before Satan. But Satan knows that if he can get us to receive condemnation instead of Holy Spirit conviction, then we will always trigger. And when we trigger, when either it's rejection or past trauma, then we will not operate in the kingdom realm. We'll be focused on the natural. And it sort of negates the whole process of the cross. And so I finally started to figure that out. And Jabbar said one day, he's like, why is it that you guys do not receive conviction from the Holy Spirit for walking in unbelief for so long? And because really what it comes down to is we don't believe that we are free. Um, the New Testament, now when I read it over and over and over again, Paul and, and, and the books of the um, New Testament will speak on, do not forget your innocence. Do not forget that you've been saved by grace. Who bewitched you to make you think you need to be circumcised? Do not go back to your former self. I mean, it's over and over again in scripture. And every time we allow Satan to condemn us, we are walking in unbelief because we are allowing him to tell us that the work on the cross is null and void. And so I have this kind of explained on a sheet and I'll do this in more depth, but basically what happens is we as believers should be able to receive Holy Spirit conviction, right? That's a healthy process so that, that we don't leave, get stuck in patterns of sin that go unchecked. And immediately when the Holy Spirit convicts us, it's just about confessing, admitting, moving on, asking for forgiveness, done. Because the cross dealt with our past, present, and future sins, right? The problem is, instead of us hearing Holy Spirit conviction, we immediately operate in condemnation, right? And two things happen to a believer when they operate in condemnation. They either go into shame, right? Which starts this endless cycle. So when we shame, when we're in shame, we're feeling terrible about our sins, right? We're allowing the enemy to shame us, right? And so... The cross actually had the power to take away sin and shame, right? But now we've ignored that and we've allowed the enemy to take us to shame. And then when we're in shame, we go into coping mode because we feel terrible. And coping mode could be food. It could be television. It could be sexual things. It could be uh, drugs, alcohol. And then when we do that, we feel the shame of that because we know it's wrong. And then we feel that we need do we not alleviate our shame again because you know Satan is accusing us and now we go back into coping mode and that's why people stay in addiction for years is this constant cycle right 
The other thing that we do is if we not go to shame, when we feel condemnation, we go into defense mode. And we go into defense mode because Christ is our defender. But when we allow Satan to condemn us, Jesus is no longer our defender. We feel the need to defend ourselves. And so we go into defense mode. And have you ever had a conversation or argument with somebody who becomes defensive? It's almost impossible now to get anything across because they just dig in deeper and pride sets up. And so when we switch healthy Holy Spirit conviction for Satan condemnation, we have now closed our ears and our eyes to the gospel and the truth of what the cross actually offers us. And so so-called believers and people who believe in the cross operate like this a lot their whole life. They go around this mountain because the truth is they really aren't operating in the power and believing in what the cross actually does. They're operating in condemnation and Satan will use rejection. That's a huge one. And that we're going to address on this podcast, um, that, uh, is a real trigger for people due to trauma in their past. And so once I realized that cycle and that's what had been happening, I was really able to quickly begin to identify when I was being triggered, when Satan was lying to me, when I was believing something that wasn't true or when I was operating in shame or defense. And then the Lord began to reveal to me something he had shown me years ago, what it actually meant to step into the kingdom realm. And like I said, the cross just makes it possible for us to now step into the kingdom of God. If you read the New Testament, it's all about the fact that Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God. So the kingdom realm is available to us, but the cross is the door. And so the cross, we, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he gave us the power to be resurrected, to overcome sin. And so, um, and the kingdom realm, it's just, once you step in there, it's limitless um, possibilities with what God offers through the Holy Spirit. And um, so my life has completely changed. That was the original question. Um, I no longer operate in condemnation. I, um, I'm quick to identify triggers. Um, God is uh, peeling back all the layers because now that I can receive healthy conviction, I can identify and recognize and deal with sin immediately instead of letting it um, completely shame me and take me down this path of either defense or whatever I do to cope. Um, and so it's, it's changed my life. And you'll hear me a lot on this podcast talk about the power. One thing I knew instinctively as a believer in church, and you can probably testify to this, knowing that there was so much more that God offered, but nobody really walked in real power. And when I say power, I don't just mean miracles and the ability to cast out demons and recognize demons and all that stuff that comes healing. The power to overcome is the greatest work of the cross. It's that inner miracle where through the cross, God begins to work on the inner man. And That's what it's um, all about. most believers I knew could not, had no power to overcome patterns of sin in their life, pattern of sins in their bloodline. Mm -hmm. They were depressed. They had no joy. They had no hope. They were serving because they knew they had to, but there was no yeah. joy there anymore. And where was the power to overcome? I didn't know any Christian who was really walking in real, real victory and joy. And even the ones who were in victory, they were not joyful. And the other thing that we do too, is we partner with, with Satan to condemn others. So not only do we allow him to condemn us, we now become the judge of others and we begin to condemn others based on physical circumstances. And um, it was just huge for me to recognize. And there's another part of it too that I won't get into now, but just knowing that there is the external earthly realm, right? Everything that I see and touch. And then there is a spiritual reality and by faith with the Holy Spirit through my spiritual eyes, I understand that that's actually where I live. That is actually where I'm from, where I'm going. And that is where the kingdom of God operates. It is a spiritual reality. It's a soup. That's why it's called supernatural. It is a supernatural thing. And we begin to see people in spirit. We begin to see what God has placed in a person and where that person is called. And we begin to love the finished work of that person through grace. So we see them finish like Christ sees us. And so we're able to help people. One of the biggest things that I think Jabbar and everybody down here did for me when I first got here was 
They spoke words over me prophetically of who I was in Christ and who I was to be. And um, it wasn't the first time that I had that done. And it was just constant confirmation of things that had already been spoken over me over my life. And so it helped me to reconnect with Christ and what Christ had uh, birthed in me and put in me. And so that I knew where I was going and I had hope in who I was going to become when I surrendered um, and was willing to lay it all down to go through this process and this work of undoing and trusting God. And uh, another big one for me was uh, faith and works. And feel free to cut in at any time, but like uh, realizing that I knew that there was supposed to be faith and not works, but I still operated in works because it's just so easy to try to earn your own salvation. And again, I'll explain this in a video through a um, diagram that I have, but we tend to not be able to give control over to God and we want to handle things externally instead of letting him take our burdens. And so what happens is we're not really trusting him and we end up working and trying to fix things in our own strength. And what I realized was faith produces the work. It's not even faith and work. It's through f- my faith and trusting in who I am, my identity in Christ that can't be taken from me. I am naked and unashamed um, and that I am uncondemnable. Satan cannot point his finger at me any longer. Christ loves me. He sees me as a spotless bride through that faith in his finished work on the cross. Now, out of that overflow is where the work is done. It's where God can use me. It's where whatever he's pouring into me comes out as I empty myself. And that's the dying process. We talk a lot, a lot down here of teach me how to die, God. What, what does it mean to die to everything? Um, all that I had to walk away from, everything I thought I knew about God. Jabbar would say, you don't know anything. Take it all out. Take it away. That's religion. That's works. You don't know nothing. You don't have the revelation of what Jesus really did. And that was hard to hear after being a believer for 40 years. I thought I knew a lot more than I did. And that was a lot of humbling. And, and he would always say, you got to empty yourself out so God can give you something else. And, um, and so, yeah, that yeah. was huge. I'm literally in the same process. Yes, we all I are. I mean, literally <laughs> just, uh, so painful. So painful. Literally just last week. And here's Heidi now helping me because not, not one is higher than the other, right? It's like, but God had some, she had walked through something that I hadn't walked through yet. And I was in the exact same place last week that it really took some hammering in um, to forget, to get me to see um, the, all this pride that I've been walking in and that I've been also going about my salvation from a workspace perspective, even though I know it's clear in scripture that it's faith over works. Um, and I didn't realize until God, God had also set me up and gave me some dreams about it, that I was operating in legalism. And it, it's so fascinating because you, you, sub, you know, mentally that that's not the truth, but the way that you operate in your life, it proves what you really believe deep down inside. And so, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, just in, even in asking God, show me how to do this better or show me to go left or to go right right now, even that sometimes can be works because it's, it's like, um, self-focused. It's, it's still my, my pride, um, wanting to do it my way. Um, and, um, even just seeing like, like sometimes I would feel paralyzed where I felt like I didn't get quality time with the Lord and, um, and I just couldn't, I would read scriptures and I would listen to worship music, but I still didn't feel like I was deeply connected to him and was coming from an outpouring of grace. And so I would be paralyzed and not know, can I go to the gym right now? Is that an idol? Can I call this person? What do I, and I'd just be stuck. And God has just been showing me um, that it's it's just belief, it's faith and just confessing, um, confessing our unbelief, emptying out our mind of everything we think we know Um, and in humility, confessing that we need him every day, that the dying process is a daily thing that we, we have to do. Um, and that it says, even the elect will be made, be led astray that even, um, Paul talks about, lest my name be blotted out of the book of life. I think it was Paul. Um, and so there's all the, there's so many scriptures in there where you realize, oh my goodness, like this, 
could mean me. It says once we start going back into the law, that we fall from grace at that point. We fall from grace. Um, that is mind blowing. And I realized I can walk away from the Lord because there's a point where the grace is lifting in a certain area where he's asking me to believe, but believe and, and faith is the currency of the whole kingdom of God. And, um, we, it's one of the biggest sins because it's the exact opposite of faith in him. Um, faith is the only thing that pleases him and it's, by our faith that the works are produced from the inside out, not from the outside in. Um, and, um, man, we really have to humble ourselves and admit that we have not arrived and we're not, we're not where we think we are. And we have to continue to allow the refining process, the pruning process to remove layers. And when God shows us something to repent, turn away and move forward into him, into his grace. And so, it's so powerful. It's so big. It, it seems so, so simple, but yet I, I think it's, we just, we just don't, can't wrap our head around it because this world teaches us we're, we're only as good as our last football game, our last book we wrote, the last movie we produced or the song we wrote or the achievement in our job, the promotion we got, but to just rest in being and abiding in him and just Believing in him is through his righteousness, not our own righteousness that we're set free. It's his doing. It's not, it's it's just like the revival that happened in Kentucky. It's like no man started that. No man could take the glory. It was purely an act of God. There was no one person that it was focused on. And um, it's because the Lord does not want to share his glory with anyone. And we all it, 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 it's not about us. It's not about our works. We have to know that he is the almighty God. Mm-hmm. He is the almighty God, the one who, who was and is to come. Um, you know, and so it's just powerful. It's, it's simple, but, but powerful. And if we could just get over our pride, get over ourselves, we will step into a whole nother realm of walking in his presence, walking in a supernatural reality that will become more real than the natural reality. But we have to deprogram what we've thought, what we've been built up in society and to be into and be rebirthed in him. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's great. And so, uh, I I love what you said. You pointed out that it's what in us that comes out in a moment that really shows what's really going on the inside. One of the things that Jabbar would consistently do for me down here would be like, can you hear what you're actually saying right now? You say this, but what comes out of your mouth is complete unbelief. And I'd be like, huh? And what I realized was, so I gave you this idea that you have earth and then you have the kingdom realm what God came to establish. He came to establish the kingdom of God. Here's an example. We say down here, it's, um, it is truth over facts. So the facts can be that my bank account is empty, but the truth is I have unlimited resources in Christ. The facts are I might not feel well today, but the truth is by his stripes, I am healed. And so if we really believe that, why is it that when my bank account is empty, I'm immediately operating in fear. I'm immediately struggling. I immediately want to go try to figure out what am I going to do next? Do I need to get another job? Do I need to ask somebody for money? And so then we pray in complete unbelief. We go to God and say, God, help me with this. Help me with this. And he's like, "Uh, I already helped you. I I promised you that in me, you have everything. And then we, we wonder, and it's like, what I realize is unbelief, honestly, is the root of all sin. Because when we sin, it's because normally we're trying to solve or fix a problem in us. So if it's sexual, it's because we're not waiting and we're not patient for God to meet that need in us through somebody. If it's addiction, we're in that process of shame with the enemy because we don't believe um, Satan is mastering us. It's, it's, so when we truly believe in the power of the gospel, that the Bible has the answer for everything, that God has the answer for everything, and that he is going to provide everything we could ever need and want, it's all found in him. It is all set up in the kingdom of God for that reason. And that all we need to do is lay our burdens down and trust him. Then 
if we're triggered and we operate in the natural to, to step in and control it, we're not actually believing in the power of what Christ offered through the kingdom of God. So then who is really mastering us at that moment? And that's what I really had to finally surrender and repent because I was like, wow, Satan really is mastering me. God, I really don't trust you. I trust you when my bank account is full. Mm -hmm. I trusted you when my marriage was good. Yep. I trusted you when my kids were following you. But the minute everything fell apart, where was my faith? And the minute I see things in the natural that don't go the way I want and I'm falling apart and I'm trying to fix it, um, where is my faith? And the truth is, God has told us over and over again, do not look at the temporal, look at the eternal. And we can't seem to get our eyes off the natural and our hands off control to really operate in the power to overcome in the gospel. And I think that's why a lot of believers do not operate in any kind of power. We are really walking around in a bunch of doubt and unbelief. And that unchecked unbelief over time is sin and it becomes rebellion. Yeah. And then we open the door to strong men and Satan and demons because we operate in sin, um, because we don't believe and we take control and then we end up sinning. And then when that goes unchecked over time, we leave the door open for the enemy and it can start as a strong man and it can lead to a demon. And we have believers walking around possessed and, and oppressed by the enemy consistently because we don't see how this works and we don't admit that, no, I actually don't believe in the power of the cross. I don't believe that God has this. I'm stubborn. I want to do this myself. And I now really, for the first time, understand personally why they murdered Jesus, because the Bible says that he uncovered their sin and that made them angry. And Jabbar uncovered me constantly. <laughs> he would say, you don't believe. You don't. You say this, but you're doing this. And it took me two years to see the pattern that I was stuck in. And it's like, it was so true. But when you feel uncovered, mm -hmm. when you have to admit that, oh, my pride, I'm digging in, he's right. Or I've been operating in shame for so long. I've allowed the enemy to beat me up and beat me up. And I did not take the authority that God gave me to kick him out. Um, that I, that falls on me. That mm. falls on me. Mm. At what point am I going to just believe? Mm. And guys, the greatest thing about after the work of dying to yourself in that two-year process I went through and just walking away from everything is the freedom that comes from being set free. I don't have to earn it. He loves me. I operate in power now to overcome sin. I can love people freely. There's no fear of man. Um, I trust God for everything. It's not that there isn't a moment of worry. It's I know how to lay it down instantly. I know how to recognize where the enemy is trying to come at me. And there is nothing like freedom. Um, as crazy as God is not asking for a whole bunch of things like we think. He's just asking us to believe in the resurrection power of the cross to overcome. Mm -hmm. And he takes it from there. If Amen. we just surrender and let him have it. And there's so much freedom in that, so much joy. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Like, what? what's not a better way to live your life? And I just, you talked about the anger that the Pharisees had when their sin was uncovered because they thought they were good with the Lord, right? They thought they were good. And to find out that their whole life was a lie, their pride rose up. And that's why it was like they couldn't even receive the truth that would set them free. So I want to challenge you guys. If you are feeling anger right now, if you're feeling your pride rise up, if you're feeling like defensive right now, um, then guaranteed that's a demonic spirit that you're dealing with. Guaranteed because the truth sets you free. So that's not normal. That's not the Holy Spirit. You know, that's not the Holy Spirit angering you. That's a demonic or it could be that you're feeling the conviction that you don't really believe and that makes you angry. It was hard for me to receive too. I just could not see that. I had to admit that I ended up here and I controlled most of my life and I actually didn't trust the Lord. 
I actually didn't obey him. And it wasn't that I was out there doing these great sins the majority of my life. I mean, when I was married, I was faithful to my husband. I faithfully served in the church. I faithfully served in ministry. My home was open to anybody and anyone. We had people live with us all the time, but I was angry. I was bitter. I was unforgiving. And I didn't have the power to overcome those things. And I was operating in complete unbelief. And that was hard to, to take responsibility that because I couldn't let go control, because I didn't really understand what Christ was offering me on the cross and I allowed Satan to come in and condemn me constantly, that I was allowing him to master me. And the Bible says you can't have two masters. You will love one and hate the other. And what's crazy is I read the New Testament now and you can attest to this, like he's speaking to the church. He is warning the church over and over again. You guys are on milk. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the revelation of the cross. You, you are operating in works. Watch out. Don't forget that you've been saved. Don't, don't go back to your former ways. You're like a man who looks in the mirror and forgets who he is. You're like the wind, yeah. you know, going from here to there. You're like the chaff being yeah. blown. He is constantly, he's not wanting the world. The world actually understands how the demonic operates and they're not under legalism or religion. It's the church that falls into that trap consistently. And he is warning them. There's going to be a period of time where even the elect will be drawn away. And this is why I believe we do not operate in the power and the authority that Christ has given us to take back ground, take back ground in our own lives, break generational curses, take back land physically take back atmospheres in our cities and our towns because we don't even do it in our own lives. So how do we dare going to take back uh, people for Christ and grow the church if we're ourselves walking like this? And Satan knows it. He knows exactly how to trigger us. He knows how to show up every time and God knows it. And God, and, and he is the one that's actually mastering us. And it, it's sad. And I can't even believe it. I'm 46 years old just now fully walking this out and understanding this for the first time. And, um, praise yeah, God. yeah. Praise God that, that I'm here now, but I, 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 I have a real burden for those who are stuck in this pattern of where the Satan has used shame and condemnation to keep us stuck mm -hmm. and where we operate and we cannot give up control yeah. of this realm um, so that we can step into what Christ really has for us. And um, yeah. So if you are in the Tyler area and you are ready to let go of it all and jump in full feet, be fully equipped, fully trained. And this get, is Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Get all God has for you. Come find us. Definitely. Send us a message. So go to our website, saintsandsoldiers.org. Send us a message through there. Um, you can find my email through there. And um, it's funny because we, <laughs> we're in fairly new ministry. We've never really done any marketing, but we're all, we change, we're very fluid the way that we meet. So if you're real comfortable being very systematic and you know, stuck in routine, routine. This is, routine. You're, you're gonna, gonna be, be definitely pressed. That yeah. part of your flesh will be pressed because you'll go on our on our YouTube channel and you'll see, you know, us on a big building. You'll see a worship team. You'll see no worship team. You'll see us in an office room. Then you'll see us outside. Then you'll see us in a house. Then you'll see us in another house. And the whole, it's just we're always it's very fluid with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> we try to be led moment by moment. <laughs> not tied to anything structural on purpose mm -hmm. to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not that structure is bad guys. We're yes. Not saying we're not that. Yeah. But, um, we definitely try to be led by the Lord and, and how and timing and everything. Yeah. We're a very small group because our process is very, very, uh, individual. It's not a cookie cutter thing. Um, my process was definitely about me undoing legalism, religion. Some people have a different process down here in our group, but, uh, the Holy Spirit knows what we each need. And, um, and so we're not necessarily like real rigorous here, but we are about getting this message out. We are about setting, helping partner yeah. with God to set yes, captives God. free. Yeah. And so the goal of the lab, this podcast 
is to go into more depth on some of the stuff we brought up. Um, what does it really mean to um, fight against uh, prince and principalities and, and undoing the lies? Um, what does it really mean when we operate in rejection? What does that actually do to us? Um, why are we really walking in unbelief and how is that the root of, of all sin? Um, what does the kingdom realm really offer us? And just going into more depth on these things, um, Jabbar is going to be um, teaching a lot. You'll see some of our podcasts will be him teaching. Sometimes it'll just be conversations like this. Sometimes it'll be me and Jabbar. Sometimes it'll be Jabbar by himself. Sometimes me by myself, J Janelle by herself. We'll have guests on. Uh, whatever we can do to get this message of freedom, the resurrection power of the cross to overcome, um, mm -hmm. to walk in power is what we want. Um, we believe that uh, time is moving fast. God is on the move. Yep. He's returning. Mm -hmm. um, he is calling his remnant yep. out. And um, yep. we want mm -hmm. everyone that is called to get this message so that they can get free, mm -hmm. so that we can walk in power to free others. Amen. And so, yeah, I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, I praise God for my journey down here. Um, it was so crucial. This is what I wanted to say, too. It's so crucial that I did this in community. I can't imagine going through what I went through the last two years um, by myself. Um, just having a group of believers um, around me, having Janelle and Jabbar that would open their home at any point to me, um, minister to my children, um, my grandchild, just um, always available and people also on the same process, understanding how difficult this is and um, all learning to walk this out together was crucial. And that is one thing we're big on here um, is, is living this out together um, and being obedient to Christ and holding each other to this standard. We joke about we've become lie detectors because um, now that I'm so aware of the lies that I was operating in, I can easily pick it up in, in, in somebody else now. The minute they speak, I know whether they truly trust God or they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not that we go around judging, but we go around to try to help people to see this pattern so that they can be set free. Amen. And um, so it's, it's, it's been great. Um, so, yes. Let's pray for them. Yeah, and if, you, if you're not in Texas, man, um, look out for these podcasts. We're going to get more consistent. We're going to be putting out more and more material. And, um, yeah, you can always, you know, reach out to us through email or, th you know, by commenting and we'll try to get back to you. But, um, yeah, definitely uh, look for more. Yeah. It's coming. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. Okay, first podcast in the books. Um, let's, or no, part two, second one. Um, so let's just pray out because I feel like we touched on some, a lot of great things and whatever was igniting your spirit. Let's just, let's just stay in that place. Um, Father in heaven, our Abba, I thank you, God, that you're such a good, good father. And you work all things good for those who are called according to your purpose, those who love you. God, give us the resolve to, to turn away from the gray area, to turn away from all darkness that is just, just um, destroying us from the inside out. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear um, the supernatural reality, the kingdom reality, what's really happening, the lies that we're believing, the truths that we're having trouble believing. Um, God, we want you to illuminate every nook and cranny, every crevice. Leave no stone unturned from anyone that can hear my voice. Leave no stone unturned. God, we pray for deliverance. We pray for freedom. God, we pray for a grace of faith, God. We confess our unbelief. We confess our unbelief. We confess, God, that we have not been able to die every day to ourselves, to lose our, our, our life for your sake so we can find it. God, help us in our pride, God. We, you resist our pride, but you give grace to the humble. So God, we humble ourselves right before you and we admit that we don't have it all together, that we don't know what we think we know. And God, we pray for new wine and new wineskins. God, rebuild us up, rebirth us, God, in you. Deprogram us from everything the world has taught us that's been a lie, a lie of Satan, things that have come up through our upbringing, 
through our communities that we've grown up in, through um, our environments that we live in, through relationships that the enemy has sent into our life that is not was not sent from you, but that was specifically on assignment to throw us off. God, you are our God, and we want to put you back on the throne, King Jesus. We love you, King Jesus. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice, for your sacrifice that it's only through your grace that you've made us righteous, not by our works, but by your perfection, your perfect grace, the blood of your son who was sinless and blameless before you. Father God, give us the revelation. Increase in our spirit what we do not know, God. The seeds that you're birthing right now through this podcast, I pray that you would ignite it, you would water it, you would mature it, you would grow it up. God, take us to meet God. Help us to get off the milk, God. Help us to make our election sure, to work our, out our salvation with fear and trembling. God, give us revelation of the fear of the Lord, the fear of you, God, the, a healthy fear, not of condemnation, but of liberation. I thank you, God, that you are actually trying to liberate us and remove what's been harming us. But we're, we've been so defensive and so prideful trying to hold on to it, thinking that it's protecting us, ultimately pretending that we're our own God. But God, we confess that we are not and you are. And so God, have your way in each and every one of us, God. Have mercy on our souls. We thank you, God, that your mercies are new every single day. So give us new life today. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All right. We'll check back with you guys next week when we have somebody else to interview. Probably Jabbar. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll get Jabbar on here, and I'll, I'll get on and do some of those more in-depth teaching with some of the uh, diagrams. But, yeah. All right, guys. Peace out.